So at this stage is I've got no clue what I'm about to do here. I'm doing a character, obviously. And the best way to start, I find, with a character, for me, is to get a sense of where his eyes are. Which is why I'm, uh, I'm doing this right now. So, centering up the eyes just lightly sketching it in it's a sort of this is a kind of classic character for me as well so I should be able to do it with my eyes closed at this point but I still can't um, because if you get the eyes wonky it looks rubbish so uh, this is why I'm trying to get it reasonably accurate so getting his nose in now there we go. That'll do. Now, I favour a sort of aesthetic where um, where the face is quite sort of uh, squashed. You know that kind of uh, really what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Narrow? No, not narrow. That's completely wrong. What's the word? Shallow, that's the word I'm looking for. Really sort of shallow, squashed up face. I really love that aesthetic. I do long faces sometimes as well, but I really love that kind of squashed face. That's what my dog looks like, basically. I mean, this is essentially a caricature of my dog. That's what it is. Little squashy face. Whoa. Um, okay, there we go. Let's get a hat on him. Getting the angle of the hat is always the thing, you know. Sometimes you put, you put the hat on, you kind of go, that's really boring. But if you do it at a nice angle, see, this is a nice angle. I've managed to get the angle right here. So get a nice angle on it. Looks a bit rakish, you know, looks a bit a bit hip hop a bit attitude-y. Because that's what I'm looking for. I want it to be a bit, well, to be you know a bit a bit a bit chewy, you know, is that a word? Probably not. He's got to have a bit of a a bit of a stance, you know. He's got to have a bit of um, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, you'll see. So, uh, put some glasses on him now, because you know. Let success arise. Um, tucking them in there. Glasses again can be a little bit tricky. Uh, I'm going for the. Uh, I'm just going for the standard glass. I'm busting to do wraparound shades again. I love all them. You know, daft kind of. You know, uh, mirror wraparound nonsenses that you see Instagram influencers wearing when they go on holiday to Ibiza all those kind of things I'm, I'm busting to do some more of them but in time so now what I'm doing is I'm trying to work out the angle that I'm going to put his body at I'm giving him a nice sort of slopey angle so I can make it a bit a bit hip hoppy you know a bit a bit uh, interesting rather than just sort of straight down put a nice big sway on his body okay again work out where the middle is where the middle of his body is that's why I'm putting his uh, putting his zip up there there we go a bit of perspective on the zip because it's because it's sort of it's swaying out towards us tiny bit of perspective on that there we go um, yeah. okay Let's kill some time here while I work out what to do next. <laughs> always, always this comes. I go, what am I doing again? What am I doing? 
I must get tested for ADHD actually. My mates getting tested for it at the moment. I've had mates who've, who've been tested before who say, oh, it's great when you work it out, when you work out that's what you've got, you know. Mind just flies off at angles, you know, don't know what you're doing. Suddenly wake up and kind of, oh, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm doing a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, completely lost, totally lost. Um, I famously suffer from OCD as well, obsessive compulsive disorder, which is why you endlessly see me farting around like this at the moment with bits that I've already done, going over bits I've done, making circular movements with my pencil, doing stuff, you know, going up. Because what I'm doing here is my mind is trying to work out, it's trying to get off a groove, and it's trying to work out what the next thing to do is, you know. OCD is one of them things, sometimes it's a nightmare, and sometimes it's, uh, it's really good. Sometimes it really works for you. Uh, I know it sounds sounds like a you know, odd thing to say, but it does. It's true. Yeah, you see, I'm still doing. I'm still working. okay. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get the zip in. Let's get the zip in there. Get some folds down the bottom of the old uh, tracky top there. Okay, put his bottom of his zip in. Bit of a fold there. All the way down there. Yeah. Okay, now we're moving. Working out. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, thin him off a bit now. See, he looks thin. When I get his hands and his arms in, it will give him more more breadth. So I don't want him to be too broad. Okay, so he zips in there. There you go. There you go. So I've got a nice basic shape for him there. Now, here we go. Hand there, there, there. Yeah, okay, see, so there's his thumb going in there. And I'm already looking at that going, nah. See, if you pull your, if he pulls his right elbow right back, that does work. But it looks weird. Already it looks too weird to me. And I'm thinking, nah, nah, let's get rid of it. Get rid of it. I want to do something more interesting than that. So, let's go in again. The beauty of working in pencil, right? So this is me trying to work out the dimensions. I'm trying to work out the dimensions without actually scribbling all over my my work. I know I know it seems like I'm just dithering here and doing nothing, but I am actually trying to work out where it goes. There we go, there we go. That's it, that's it, that's the one. Get his thumb in, yeah. Mm, is it big enough? No, it's not. There you go, a bit bigger. Okay, that's it. That's the right size. There's his marker pen. I blow it out just to get the dynamic. Get the dynamic, feel the dynamic. I can worry about the details later. Don't forget, it's a sketch. Get his, start to get his fingers around it. There we go. There's his first finger. Okay. Other finger there. That's probably a bit short. Is it a bit short? Other finger. Always three fingers on cartoons. Don't ask me why. I think it's an old Disney tradition. Um. Yeah, gives you one less finger to draw anyway. Get his uh, get his big fat nib on there. Nice, another bit of perspective there. Little tiny bit of perspective on his nib, just to lift it towards us a little bit. Just get his arm in, just to make sure it works. Got a nice long arm there. Once I've once I've just got the lines in, there you go. Nice long arm. That will do nicely. 
Okay, now. Because it's not just about, it's not just, draw, you can't just draw a hand, and what you, what you can do, but you're looking to create dynamism, you're looking to create a pose, you're looking to create, to create something in, interesting, you know. So here we go. I'm drawing this one. Classic finger point, all that. Uh, drawing hands, by the way, that uh, the great, the late great Leon Baxendale used to say, um, base a lot of your stuff on circles, basic shapes, circles, rectangles. See, I'm looking at that and putting the arm in there, and I'm thinking this isn't very good. I mean, it's all right, but it's not brilliant, is it? Um, also, it's not very dynamic. Now I'm looking at it, it's not that dynamic. It's all right. But you don't want to, you know, you don't want to do dynamics. So I'm reaching for the rubber. Here we go. Let's get rid of it. Let's try something better. Because we can do better than that. We can do better. So how about we put it in up there? How about that? This is a bit more dynamic. There we go, thumb in, full finger, other thing. You see the circle, cir circular, what's the word? See, see how circular that hand is when you look at it like that? It's based on a circle. Just fill in the details. That's all I'm doing there, really. I'm so used to sketching them out, I can just sketch them out, but, you know, draw circles, draw fingers, you know, it's, it's easier than you think. It takes practice, but, you know, what else you got to do with your time, frankly? This is me thinking about creases. Um, I don't often put creases in. I don't know why I'm bothering doing this because I'll probably get rid of them in a second. Yeah, get rid of that. Don't want that. <laughs> What's the point? Also, I don't know what I'm going to accessorise him. I'm probably I'm going to put a backpack on him, and uh, that's going to kill all that anyway. So, you know, what's the point? There we go. Get the straps in for the backpack. And sure enough, it will kill all those creases. So glad I didn't waste my time doing that. That's the wrong angle on that. I'll come back to that in a minute. Who is it? Ethan Van Skyver, who's a great artist, old DC artist. I think he's independent now. And uh, check out his channel. Um, I don't know if he does many drawing tips nowadays. He mostly sort of does a lot of the political stuff nowadays, but but his his drawing tips are great. And he always says this thing about drawing is just a con it's just a constant it's a constant process of self correction and slight adjustment. That's what that's what sketching is. You're just making like tiny adjustments the whole time. Look at things, you know, you, you, you make a line you kind of go, that's not quite right. Here we go. Just, I'm just putting the uh, the backpack in there and uh, thinking about where I'm going to put stuff and thinking, no, I don't want that. No, get rid of that. That's what it is. It's a process of adjustment all the time. Tiny little adjustments. Need something else. What was I doing there? Yeah. So you can see now I'm getting my basic form down in pencil. You can see what you can see where I'm going with it now, and I can see where I'm going with it now. Always use technical pencil, by the way, for the reason you just saw my lead break there. It's annoying, um, but that's why I use technical pencil because I can't be bothered with sharpening stuff all the time. Um, but yeah. I'm starting to get an idea of where this is going to go. Okay, good, 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 good. So, just about finished here. That's going to do for this one. 